Hello everyone, and welcome to my LEGO room. I'm TJ the Brickwright, and today we're going to be talking about a ship that you actually saw a preview for over at Brickslopes. I apologize for the placement of my microphone today. Um, there is a lot of background noise going on, so I had to get it really close to make sure that I could cut some of that stuff out. So <laughs> I hope you guys can bear with me as I deal with technical difficulties, as is the norm for a one-man YouTube operation. Uh, so today, uh, we're going to start, like we've started before, with a little bit of background information. Uh, hopefully, I'll have some images and things come up um, while I'm working on this, and hopefully it doesn't take that long to edit. Um, but today, I'm introducing a brand new ship, and not only is it going to be available uh, to see here for the first time and go over some of the details, but the instructions are available on rubricable.com right now. So. Uh, I hope you can go over there and enjoy them and appreciate the uh, the build. So, by now, most of you know that I have a few issues with the sequel trilogy of Star Wars. But no issue is greater for me than the lack of new vehicles, new ships. Sure, the writing wasn't the best, the story was kind of recycled plot lines, and the characters were fairly one-dimensional, but my biggest gripe has to be the vehicles. Obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into these things, and I don't want to negate the work that people go through, but these things are then passed through a director who chooses things and makes decisions, and sometimes I have issues with some of the design work. So take the harmonica ship, the resistance troop transport. Instead of going for an effective small silhouette when you're you know, advancing in an en onto an enemy position, they make themselves as big of a target as possible. Uh, this was partially explained in universe by stating that the ship was cobbled together from leftover parts. However, if keeping your troops alive is a priority, it's probably not a great idea to make your ship as easy to hit as the broadside of a barn and just as wide. So wide, in fact, that apparently driving the ship seems about as easy as driving a jackknifed semi-truck trailer. So, in fairness, though, you are usually flying in space where there's a whole lot of nothing out there. But, this is a troop landing craft. You have to land it. Sometimes on a battlefield. But, hey, battlefields are usually super clean and easy to navigate. But, at least you have an unobstructed view to see around this ungainly ship. Right? Right? Of course not. The ship was so heavily modified, the pilot had to rely almost completely on instruments to fly the thing. Hope your power doesn't go out on a ship that is, according to official sources, known for breaking down constantly. For once in a blue moon, can the good guys have a ship that isn't a leftover piece of garbage? I know I'm one to talk, considering the Minox Squadron, but the Resistance transports were supposedly made by people living in peacetime, with access to all kinds of resources. Even if it's just leftover resources, they still had access to them. And they still can't figure out how to build a decent ve vessel that doesn't break every other time you use it. Okay, now for the things I like about the resistance transport. What, you thought all I'd do is complain? The ship is an interesting design and fits in the Star Wars universe aesthetically. The sideways harmonica style design isn't that terrible of an idea. It allows for a much larger opening than other dropships and is actually quite well armored. On top of that, it's just weird enough that it wouldn't exist in our world, but still combines the visual cues to let you know exactly how it works. It checks all the boxes on the Doug Chang Star Wars design list, and I give credit to the designers for creating a very different ship in a quite thoroughly explored galaxy. But let's be done with that and talk about what I propose to replace the ship. I call this the HT-33 dropship and troop container. So this started, as many of my builds do, by browsing through designs on ILM's design challenge on ArtStation. I came across some images by Adam Middleton and thought, hey, that's a pretty cool shape for a troop container. So I built one. Let's go and show you that. So this, is what the troop compartment actually looks like. So it's got a pretty interesting, almost pentagonal shape on the uh, on each end. From the sides, it just looks pretty much like a box, just a little bit of the red detailing to give it a little bit of character. 
And to make sure that it worked really well, I made sure to include these little mechanisms so it could actually be held and dropped by the BAAD, the bad A. But something about the art that they had created really inspired me. The dropship that was carrying the container had a skeletal front end and the wheels really started turning in my head. So these images weren't really enough to design an entire ship. So some exploration and design work of my own filled in the gaps like frog DNA to velociraptor genetic code. And I'm happy with the genetic monstrosity that I've created here. Let's take a closer look at the pot itself. The shaping was surprisingly easy at first, each piece coming together with very few problems, if any, as far as I can recall. I think I just picked a size and started building. The only major change from the first iteration to this final one was the length. The container was only half this big, so this little halfway line was actually the size of the original ship. So if I, if I kind of cover this up with my hand, that's how big the original ship was, or the original pod was, and it, it actually wasn't really bad. However, I realized it needed to be a lot longer to reach the mounting brackets on the BAAD. So I ended up just doubling the size and it seemed to work pretty good. Uh, the remnants of that design change are actually quite noticeable once you start looking for the seams in the build. But those same seams actually allowed me to have an open section at brick slopes. So I kept all the pieces as I originally put them together. So if we go ahead and open it up here, you can see that there are two main sections, also reminiscent from the two, uh, from the smaller version of the pod that I had before. Uh, this particular one is meant strictly for troops, and it can carry, I believe, up to like 16 troopers inside this thing, uh, which may not be a lot when it comes to like official military things, but for a Lego vehicle, and for a little Lego drop pod, that's actually pretty considerable. Um, this one also has a, I'm trying to get some light in the back there, but it's not working with me. There's actually a gun rack right back here so that you can actually just carry a few extra weapons. Ah, there we go. You can kind of see it, kind of see the gun rack in the back, but that was just an addition because uh, at the front we have our gate that lowers down for the troops to enter and exit but then on the back there seemed to be just some wasted space so i threw in a gun rack on this one and then i'll show you the command module in just a second that has some other uh, fun little features and that is what it looks like uh, one of the tricks that i use whenever i'm putting these back together is instead of just closing it up and then pushing these down what i like to do is push these just slightly in a little bit and then when it goes up, it contacts a little soon, but then when you push it tight, it uh, pushes the hinges right back into place exactly where they need to go. And that makes it really easy to mount onto the dropships themselves. The dropship was a new design challenge for me. And before we get too far into it, let's go ahead and disconnect it from the pod so you guys can see how that works. Uh, it doesn't have a nice, neat little switch to disconnect it, unfortunately. Um, the space in here is a bit too tight for that. But what we do have is we just have two pieces that you need to remove. So this little cover piece and this little yellow Technic uh, double pin piece. And then once you've done that, you can just grab onto the little attachment part, slide the pod forward, and you're disconnected just like that. And then you just go ahead and put those pieces back on and you're good to go. Ship is ready to fly. Uh, I needed a ship that fit perfectly around that pod, but also could hold it in place and be swooshable. So I started immediately with which part do you think? If you guess the engines, you would be actually be 100% correct. Over the years, I've noticed that with different designs, there are certain aspects that are going to cause you trouble and can have critical failure points when it comes to the design. But if you can address those early enough, you can avoid having to deal with them at a later date or in a more crucial juncture. In this case, the engines were what I wanted to concentrate on the most. 
I needed to make sure they evoked a sense of power and size while they were carrying the pods. If you look at the ship, while it doesn't have the pod on it, the engines are ridiculously oversized for just this little tiny ship. But once it's got the cargo pod on there, they actually fit and are sized quite well. I'll uh, put it back on in a minute. You can see that, see the difference. I also didn't want them to feel tacked on after the fact. Mostly that meant not using existing engine elements whenever possible and building the engines attached to the pods to get the perfect size. So to be more clear, I actually took the drop pods and built the engines firmly attached to the sides of this. And it didn't work out great because those hinges aren't exactly made for that much weight, but it did help give me a really good idea of where those needed to be. The end result turned out quite nicely. And though I did use the new X-Wing engine parts on the back, just those uh, the thruster sections, I don't think they detract too much. To justify the considerable size of the engines, I imagine that these would have hyperdrives either with stored jump points or directed from a lead ship similar to the A-Wing. Once the engines were worked out, I started trying to tie them together around the outside of the pod. After I got a crude version complete, I started working on the next important part, the forward vanes. That's these two support vanes right at the front there. While looking at the concept art, I noticed that some of the supports on the empty dropship looked like they might be big enough to walk through. So I decided to treat the front of the ship as the true deployment section instead of the back like the concept art showed. Once I had the parameters for that complete, the ship came together almost like the pieces were designed exactly for this build. The final design uh, that I had to fight was actually space for the minifigure because this cockpit is extremely small. Uh, so small, in fact, that if your minifigure tries to sit up, you will not be able to close the windscreen. Uh, it's a little too tight to fit uh, most of the different alien uh, creatures or alien bipedal species in Star Wars. It's pretty much just got to be a regular minifigure person. You can have a helmet on it, obviously, and that means some alien heads will fit because this is the uh, this is one of the new resistance helmets that are a little bit taller in the front than some of the older x-wing helmets but it's going to be a tight fit and you really have to lay them down in order to get this thing to close properly of course like any decent star wars ship designer or fan ship designer i decided to add a few extra cannons onto the front so you can see we've got the two light blasters here at the front and then we have two medium blasters and some uh, aiming lasers and the reason i added these i i, I didn't want to just sit there and say okay now I have to put a bunch of guns on it because, as I learned, with the NMD-5 transport, a ship doesn't have to have weapons to be a Star Wars design. But as I thought about this more and more and thought about drop ships and watched Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars, what I noticed is that a lot of times the ships that didn't have weapons would get taken out pretty easily, especially when they were trying to flee a planet to get to a jump point. For hyperspace so to sum up i think i came up with a pretty good replacement for the resistant harmonica transport it's not the worst ship ever but i think there was room to improve and some more interesting designs that could exist in the star wars universe like all my cargo vehicles i hope to one day come up with some additional cargo carriers but for now the only thing that this one carries is the troop transport but the way these things fit together is very satisfying uh, before we go, and before the end of the video, I did promise you that I would show you my command module version of the ship. And I don't have instructions for this one yet, but they're pretty easy to modify if you think, uh, and just look at it for, for a minute. So obviously you can see that I have two different ships. I have the one with the blue trim and then the one with the black trim. You can just go ahead and color swap those when you order the parts. So change all of the black pieces to blue or yeah, or what any other color you happen to have a lot of or would like to purchase on BrickLink. Uh, so I'll pop this one off real quick and show you just how fast they can actually come apart. Whoop. And I'll open this guy up. 
And you can see that in the back, instead of a bunch of troops, we actually have a few people gathered around. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this off as well. So you can see in just a little bit better. So we have Princess Leia Organa right here leading the resistance fight. We have a small hologram table. I'll go ahead and show that to you a little closer. So it really is just a very simple table, just a few uh, round plates of so the four by four plate, some round uh, corner tiles, and then some transparent pieces to make it look a little bit more like a hologram. So something to kind of match the uh, ATTC's hologram table, but in a obviously smaller form. And then on the back wall, instead of the the weapons, I just found a, a, dis, a display panel that I might be able to actually just pull off here for you. I think this is from the Millennium Falcon, one of the Millennium Falcon uh, official minifig, uh, eh, not official minifig, Millennium Falcon official kits. <laughs> I just can't remember what year. And I just kind of stuck that on there and then have the outside of the the build go right around it if it'll actually go on for me right there now i know that seemed like it was really easy to take off but the main reason it was is because i took off this roof section as long as you don't do that with your normal builds uh, it's not going to fall apart on you anytime soon and that is the command module uh, you can see obviously i changed the color on that one from red to orange as well to make it uh, a little easier to identify and you know everybody likes something a little different oh my goodness did I do this backwards look at that well, at least it's an easy fix right and then even though that just happened even though I just literally took those pieces off it still carries itself by these two little Technic pieces which is pretty fun and again it does fit in the BAAD which is really exciting for me I'm always looking for new ways to incorporate uh, drop vehicles and more modular items into my repertoire. So, uh, once again, the instructions are available at rebrickable.com. And until the next time that we are back in the Lego room, I have been TJ the Brickwright. Play well. Bye. Speaking of which, let's talk about it. And I'll. Uh, Whoa, it turned inside out and then it exploded.